You know, Jeff, you know Howard Schultz. You know his track record as a businessman. Running as a centrist independent, does he have a shot? I think he's got a shot. I think he seriously in, intends to do it. He's, there are five qualities of great uh, mythic American business heroes, and he's got all five of them. One of them is the common touch. He can relate to anybody, his humble origins, growing up in a housing project. Uh, he's overcome adversity. His dad had been disabled when he was young, and Howard had a rough route early in his uh, career. He's a fabulous communicator. I've seen him electrify audiences as a third quality, and as a, a fourth one, he is, uh, he's terrific at uh, uh, basically uh, 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 trying to um, show that he's got sweeping social visions to get people quite excited. It, he's passionate and principled about what he believes in. The downside, of course, is uh, he's not going to be uh, going down easily with the Democratic Party if he's going to war with the Democratic Party. If he can get that 40 percent, the 39, 40 percent of centrists will be the big argument here, the big challenge. If Trump wins, it's better for him. Bill, your take? Uh, first of all, I'm still stunned over the $11 billion we totally wasted on a feudal shutdown and the fact we're launching a trade war with China and our growth is slowing. But beyond that, Howard is a truly an authentic leader, and I think he's going to bring a really important voice to issues that need to be heard in our country. Look, the thing, we're two years away, and it's going to be very volatile. Lord knows what's going to happen if you get an Elizabeth Warren versus Donald Trump. I think Howard Schiff. Schultz looks awfully good as an independent because he is a fiscal conservative social liberal, something we haven't had in 20 years. And uh, you see that deficit climbing, $2.2 billion under a Republican president for last year, up to $21 billion. Somebody's got to address that. And I think issues like health care and education, Howard is very good on those and very supportive of all people. He lived, as Jeff said, the work, the life of a working class person. And we have abandoned the working class in this country. That's terrible. And we gave an upper class tax cut. Why didn't we give it to the middle class? Why don't we give it to people that are really hurting? Why don't we do more to encourage millennials for their education? And so I think Howard will bring a really important voice to the issues that America needs to hear. And I can't wait to hear him in the debates and really addressing these issues because we've been abandoned those issues by the kind of left-right stuff we've had in our political environment that is unhealthy for the United States. Jeff, but does I, it feel I like completely the agree moment with you, Bill. in political I, history where we actually want a centrist CEO of a multi-billion dollar company? Both bases would probably have reason to be hostile uh, about that. If, if it's a, the polarity that Bill suggests with Donald Trump on one hand and, and someone such as Elizabeth Warren on the other hand, and by the way, for the last two years, the media is mislabeling uh, them as progressives. Progressives through our history were actually centrist Republicans. These are, these are right. uh, democratic socialists. And if it's, if it's that extreme polarity that's set up, he'll run away with it. But if it's Joe Biden, then it's a lot more complicated. I don't think Joe Biden and Howard Schultz want to run against each other. Uh, I know Joe Biden quite well, and he's quite serious about, about getting in here. And this... This definitely complicates it. As for what CEOs do, and Bill can speak to this too, Howard, surprisingly, does not have a huge constituency of CEOs. While his causes are very genuine, he's very impassioned, he doesn't usually join anybody else's team, as this third-party candidacy suggests, this independent candidacy suggests. It causes on racism and employing Vietnam veterans and all these other great causes. There are existing groups out there doing that. He never joins them. It's always sort of a little too Howard-centric is the knock on, on him, and that's, that's, that, that'll be a challenge. I think it's worthwhile, Bill, to, to take a look right now about, on, about the history of business leaders in the White House. I mean, we don't have that many to judge from, but President Trump and, I guess, Hoover, Herbert Hoover. I mean, wh what are the transferable skills, and what's the verdict? Well, I think well, it, <laughs> I wouldn't want to compare it to either one of those people. Uh, I think you'll find that Howard uh, is a great leader at bringing people together. He's done it all his life. He's a job creator, created 350,000 jobs. He's a wealth creator, created $82 billion in market cap. And I think he has that pragmatic sense of people. He's created a community in Starbucks. And when there's a crisis, he, he and Kevin Johnson flew out to Philadelphia to a deal addressed to the issues of the improperly treated African Americans. And he addressed that issue and he shut the place down to talk about real issues. And so I give him a lot of credit. And I think he'll pull a lot of people with him uh, who want someone who is fiscally responsible and is concerned about the American people and where we're going. And that's hey, what Jeff, I'm concerned about. Jeff, and I, Jeff, Jeff. Disrupt Jeff, the visions. He's the real deal. Uh, he is the Horatio Alger I, story that people often mythologize. You just can't. 
you can't. He'll just talk over you all the time. Uh, Jeff, uh, why shouldn't he run as a, uh, a as a Democrat? Why not try to pull that party more back towards the center, uh, as opposed to running this certainly higher risk candidacy as an independent? He's he's uh, creating a scapegoat of uh, the Democrats by looking at Elizabeth Warren, who is on the edge, on the extreme of the Democratic Party, and suggesting that that's the norm. If he did run within the norm of the party, I think he'd have a much better chance of winning. As an independent, I think it, it is very hard for him. But as Bill suggested, he's had very successful disruptive visions. He's the, the uh, epitome of the American dream. We have had successful business leaders. Uh, now, as an independent, Michael Bloomberg, of course, was a, a, an extraordinarily successful public servant. People didn't think so. The toughest, toughest, second toughest job in America is the mayor of New York City, people say, <laughs> after being right. president. And we'll see what Bloomberg does here. Is he going to run, you think, Jeff? I think he was very tempted up until 60 minutes, and, and we'll see. Uh, I think he, he yeah. certainly he has uh, more than 10 times the wealth of Howard Schultz, and Howard Schultz has more than twice that of Donald Trump. So the staying power of some of these people <laughs> is, is pretty significant. I think that, uh, that Howard definitely wants it. I think Michael Bloomberg is ambivalent, and that's the difference. When the President Trump suggested Howard Schultz doesn't have the guts, well, that's, that's certainly not the case. Howard Schultz certainly is a tenacious fighter. Uh, he has a, a gilded tongue. He's a, a wonderful human being, but he also uh, can be quite tough. And he's had much tougher origins than anybody that's running out there. He is, he is the real deal that way.